Hey guys, so I'm here today to film kind of a heavy topic. Um, if you didn't see, I'm filming this on Saturday and last night some allegations came out against James Charles um, from a young TikToker who was 16. And I didn't want to film a video on this. And I think a lot of tea channels and drama channels and commentary channels will avoid filming a video on this because the topic is so heavy that you don't ever want to be wrong. But I also feel like people need to talk about it or it's going to keep happening. And honestly, my opinion about the situation has gone back and forth, but I spent this morning doing a lot of research on the situation, scanning through Twitter, um, watching the child in questions TikToks, and I'm kind of going back through past James Charles drama. I will link below a video from Petty Page that I think everyone should watch. She does a good timeline of events. Um, and I just think that we need to talk about James Charles because this is no longer a one-off situation where he can play the victim. This has become a pattern of, um, I don't want to call it a pattern of abuse, but it's become a pattern with James and we need to talk about it because if he has to sweep this under the rug one more time, he will just keep getting away with it. So before I get into this video, subscribe to my channel. Uh, my next video up this week will be about the allegations that Seth Francois has against David Dobrik. They're not really allegations, there is video evidence of it. So it'll be a little bit of a heavy week on my channel this week, sorry. I always feel like when no one's talking about a topic, I feel the need to talk about it because like it needs to be talked about. Before I really start this video, I want to say, Tati was wrong in her bi sister video and James Charles is wrong right now are two points that can coexist at the same time. I just made a video actually about where is Tati and a lot of people online I've been seeing saying like where is Tati like maybe Tati and Jeffrey were right and like let's not ever say Jeffree Star was right first of all. Um, and we can say that Tati was wrong and Tati made her video about vitamins and we can also say that right now James Charles is in the wrong and those can coexist. This doesn't mean that we need to revisit the bi sister drama and say that Tati and Jeffrey must be right. I still believe based on the evidence presented about the Seattle waiter and James Charles and those screenshots that it was a difficult situation that Tati was fed information by James and Jeffrey to try or sorry by Jeffrey and Shane to try to take uh, James down. So this is kind of like a separate situation in my mind. So before I get into the current allegations, I want to revisit James's history because I will say that Petty Page's video kind of opened my eyes. And I think seeing it all together will make you realize that this is a pattern. So there was the Seattle waiter situation that happened. Then after the bi sister drama came out, there were multiple women online. Um, I think one was Zara and there was another girl named Olivia who said that James Charles was in their straight boyfriend's DMs um, hitting him up. And now James has said that, I think James came out and said that Zara's boyfriend was in his DMs first or whatever. So there's another Instagrammer by the name of Steven Harrison who has a wife and children and he posted DMs of James Charles that I never saw until I watched Petty Page's video. And in them, James Charles, first of all, opens the conversation with Hi Daddy. And then um, the guy's like, oh my God, James Charles in my DMs, what's up? And then James says, not much, whatever. And he's like trying to talk to him. And then eventually the guy says, what brings you to my DMs? And he says, you're hot. And he replies with, I appreciate that my guy, I'm as straight as could be with a winky face. And James's response is, you could have just accepted the compliment, ha 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 ha, in all caps, have a lovely day. Which like, first of all, straight fuckboy material. I think a lot of the times with James Charles, you have to look at things and flip the genders and like act if he was a straight man and he approached some girl and said, hey, sexy in her DMs. And she was like, hey, what's up? What brought you here? And he was like, you're hot. And she was like, sorry, I'm a lesbian. And he was like, well, you could have just accepted the compliment. Like just accept the compliment is such a misogynistic, <laughs> straight fuck boy thing to say. So I'm getting strong fuck boy vibes. And when I saw that, I was just like, that's fucked up. And then he says, have a lovely day. Like, oh, if you're not gonna accept the fact that I said you're hot and accept the compliment, like I'm done here. Like also you opened the conversation with hi daddy to a straight married man. So then 
we go to July of 2020. I kind of missed this tea. I only saw James's response of basically the idea that he was texting with someone who was underage and he said the kid lied about how old he was, but I never really looked into it. And again, I think because of the way the drama community attacked James during the original Bi Sister video and the predator allegations from Jeffree Star, um, everyone was really hesitant to say anything about what happened in July of 2020 because nobody wanted to be that person. We were all proven wrong when um, James dropped his No More Lies video. So everyone is like very apprehensive and like as you should be because like these are serious allegations people are levying. However, I think you still need to look at the facts and like present them to your audience and let people know what's happening because now we're here again. So in July of 2020, a 14 year old boy named Ethan came out and said that James was sending him nudes. James again said this kid lied and said he said he was 18. And I'm sure everyone called this kid a clout chaser. However, this kid already had 300,000 subscribers on TikTok. So like, it wasn't like he was a nobody who was trying to gain views. He literally already had a platform. His story again was that James reached out to him and because he had a platform, all you have to do is Google this kid's name and it comes up how old he is. Also, I strongly believe that if you watch a 14 year old's content, it's pretty easy to tell that they're 14. Like he wasn't hiding his age and he's, he came out in videos in like an Instagram story, I believe, and said that he never told James he was 18. He said he was 16. And I know a lot of our first assumptions are to jump to well, like he probably did lie. Like James said he lied, why wouldn't we believe James? And I'll be honest, that was my first thought last night when I heard about the first allegations. I'm like, well, James said this kid lied. But then I kind of took a step back because my stance as a feminist is always to believe victims and I need to take a step back, weigh my own biases and think about how I would approach the situation if the genders were reversed. I know it sucks to have to do that, but I think it's okay to say that as humans, we are biased. Nobody is perfect and it's okay to have biases as long as you check those biases. Like you're going to have, as a straight white woman, I'm going to have both racial and um, sexist biases. I have internal, internalized misogyny. And so I had to take a step back and be like, okay, if the, if the roles were reversed, what would I think? And then that's why I also did some more research this morning. So this kid also showed proof that James showed, sent him nudes. And this kid, I just wanna say, if this kid was chasing clout, why has he deleted both his TikTok and his Instagram? I couldn't find a sliver of him on the internet because James Charles fans made him go away because people called him a clout chaser and made him go away. And who knows, maybe this kid was a victim and we made him go away and we chose James Charles side because Tati lied a year ago or two years ago. Also what's interesting is during all of this, this kid, Ethan, this child who was 14 showed screenshots. And in one of the screenshots, again, I think that like the way you speak to people is so telling of what you are as a person. And I guess James Charles went on Logan Paul's podcast and talked about some, some boy. And Ethan messaged him and was like, it sounds like you were talking about me. And he was like, no, I was talking about somebody else. Talking about this kid named Nick who was man enough to come see me in LA because James is always trying to fly boys out to him, which is like very sugar daddy behavior and is already a power imbalance that I will touch on. Um, and like just the idea that this kid said he didn't want to go see James and James says, oh, you're not man enough to come see me. Like, again, it's very like manipulative, emotionally abusive behavior. He's trying to shame this boy into coming to visit him. Like, I'm sorry, if I ask someone to come visit me who I'm trying to fuck and they don't want to, then that's a pretty uh, clear indication that this isn't the right situation for either of us to be in. So why are you pushing it? And then why are you going on and bullying this kid, even if you did think he was 18, that he's not man enough to come see you? Like, it's just like very off-putting. And also we have to say, you know, as much as we can say, maybe the kids are lying. Maybe they told James he was 18. And maybe that's true, but here we are again in February of 2021 and more allegations. This time it's a 16 year old child who has come out against James, who has said that they have exchanged nudes. They both have differing stories, of course. James says the kid said he was 18. The kid says, 
um, that he said he was 16 and James didn't care. Um, and honestly, nobody will ever know the truth except for the two of them because Snapchat's how they communicated and it deletes everything. However, I will say, again, this kid has 200,000 followers on TikTok. Does he need the clout? I mean, also, I don't know if you're get like, I don't under know if society understands the stigma surrounding male sexual assault and how most people don't want to use that for fame. Like if you look at sexual assault allegations as a whole, people always talk about fake or wrongful accusations and the percentage of wrongful accusations are so minuscule that it's like negligible. It's not even a percentage that matters. So I'll be honest, when I read this story last night, I was talking to my friend about it. And honestly, the fact that Trisha got involved and like was throwing in Charlie D'Amelio's name didn't fucking help. And I thought, well, James's story, it doesn't sound like a sexual predator. And also this child, Isaiah, had screenshots of the nudes that James had sent him. So he had sent him nudes and he had like taken a picture of his phone with his iPad and had the screenshots. And like, what's weird is like, Part of me was like, well, why did he have the foresight to take the screenshots if he knew that something bad was happening? Why didn't he just cut it off at the time? But like, why am I victim blaming this child? Because realistically, it doesn't fucking matter. It doesn't matter if this kid lied. It doesn't matter if James thought he was 18 because like, why are we putting the onus on this child? Like that's our own bias we need to check and we need to stop victim blaming and ask ourselves why we're not putting the onus on the fucking adult in the situation. And an adult who has been in this situation so many times before, he literally just had this happen in July of 2020 and he didn't learn. He was like, oh, well, I guess now I'll ask for like passports and ID. Like that should have been your learning six months ago. Why is that only your learning now? It kind of feels like, like I saw uh, Smokey Glow say that this wasn't, him being negligent, this was a calculated risk he took. And there's a reason he did it on Snapchat and it wasn't just so his nudes would disappear. It's because now there's no record of the conversation either. And like James should know by now that he is a celebrity. And the fact that he, like, he's like, I would never risk my career for a couple snaps. And like, I mean, that's a cute idea, but like Harvey Weinstein risked his career, risked his career for a lot of things. All of these men who are in the Me Too movement risk their careers because they're sick individuals. So to say that you wouldn't risk your career for a couple snaps, like if you're allegedly into little boys, what, like I saw Trisha say, like if you're into, if you have to ask them for ID, maybe they're too young for you. And I do kind of like, I can understand like 18 and 21, it's not that far apart because James is only 21 years old. However, like you're in a position of power where this has happened before. I know there have been other people who have made allegations that were false against him, but ask, why is asking for ID so, ID so hard for you? Like if you actually were concerned about whether or not that kid was 16, first of all, you would have done some research. And second of all, you would have asked for ID because if you look at the kid's TikTok, it says he's 16 years old. So I know James said he's found him through Instagram and added him to Snap, but this, if you look at the kid's Instagram page, he has two highlights, one for Snapchat and one for TikTok. So I'm supposed to believe that James clicked on the Snapchat one and not the TikTok one. And you know what, maybe he did. But maybe once he got a picture of the kid and wasn't sure if he was 18 or not and only got verbal confirmation, he could have done some research. Google the kid. Like you can look into someone's content to see how old they are. It's very easy. Your girl is an FBI agent. I am always stalking people for my friends online and I can find anything. So it's not difficult. It's like, it just feels like it's negligence on his part. Like he didn't look and like, why aren't you looking? You should have learned your lesson by now. This is now a pattern with you. And you know, Keemstar posted a video on Twitter last night. And like the fact that I have to agree with Keemstar, like James, what are you doing to me? Keemstar posted a video that said, even if the kid lied, like you have to think about it this way. Of course, if you reach out, if like an, your idol reached out, reached out, reached out to you, reached out to you and asked you if you were, 
18 or not, you would lie and say yes. Of course kids are gonna lie. But the fact that James didn't do anything was reckless and he's not wrong. James is being reckless. James is taking calculated risks because he thinks he can get away with it. It's giving me very power hungry vibes. And I think another huge issue in this is why the fuck is James Charles trying to date his fans? or not even date, just sexed his fans. He said in his statement that he knew, that he added this kid to Snapchat and that um, he woke up the next morning to a bunch of messages from this kid being excited that he added him because James, and also James had already seen that this kid followed him. So James knew that this kid looked up to him. James knew there was a high chance this kid was a fan if he followed him. And James continued to sex with him and like, the issue here is James has so much power that he's not acknowledging. Why also, like there is a reason that we don't think that bosses should date their uh, employees because there's a power imbalance. And the same thing goes for celebrities and YouTubers. We have this weird par parasocial relationship with YouTubers and people look up to them. And James is in a position of power to ask these kids or young adults, if they're 18, to do things they may not be comfortable with. And based on the text messages I've seen, he's not very nice about it. You know, he's telling them they're not man enough to come see him. And even if that person was 18, like that's a fucked up message to send. And that's a fucked up way to emotionally manipulate your audience or your fan base because you want to fuck them. Like to me, it seems like James is getting off on the attention. He likes the idolization and the fawning. Being a celebrity is like it to him. And he likes that these young men, maybe young adults, are fawning over him being so famous. But if you were actually out here in the world looking for a fucking boyfriend, like you're always complaining you can't find, you'd be looking for someone who sees you as an equal, not someone who looks up to you. Are you looking for a boyfriend or are you looking for somebody that you can dominate and push around? Because those are not the same things. Maybe the issue here is that James Charles doesn't understand what a relationship actually is, but it's a partnership. And if you are actually looking for someone to be your boyfriend, you would be looking looking for somebody who doesn't idolize you because that's a fucked up way to start a relationship. Also, why are we sending nudes like a day in with our fans? Like maybe like chat for a couple days, see if you actually like this person before just being like, wow, you're hot, here's my ass. Like just like maybe, especially when you're James Charles and you have a huge platform and you know these kids could easily send your ass picture out there in the world. like. What the fuck? You know, there are so many single gay men in the world. Why is it that you're trying to go after your fans? What is it about your fans that is different to you other than the fact that they fawn over you? To me, it feels like it's the idolization that he's into, which is fucking unhealthy. And like, just make it a fucking rule to stop flirting with your fans. How about that? No? Or maybe talk to them for like a week before you whip out your dick. And I also want to take a step back and talk about clout for a second because I realized I have notes on this and I didn't, <laughs> I didn't touch on them. So everyone says these kids are here for clout. And like I mentioned, they already have followers on TikTok. And you know, people are out here saying like, go to the police, don't go to social media. But I think it's very easy to say that when you aren't a victim because it's very clear that the justice system is not easy to navigate for victims, especially in an instance like this where like the evidence disappears because it's on Snapchat. Yeah, they don't have any evidence other than this kid's being sent nudes from James. And also let's not act like the justice system treats uh, rich people the same as everyone else. Like, are you here to tell me that you don't think James Charles could afford the best lawyers in the world to tear this kid down publicly? We have all seen sexual assault cases go public. We have seen what they have done to the victims in these situations. They are torn down and ripped apart and you know, it's okay. It's no one's decision to tell someone to go to the police if they're not in that person's shoes. And you know, they can say, they can speak out and say this person is an abuser without, so that they can protect other people without having to go to the police and deal with the police because let's not act like the police treat victims well. Let's not act like the victims wouldn't be, wouldn't be victim blamed at a police station when general public online is doing the same thing. I just think that overall, this has been shown to be a pattern for James. You know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Like he, 
he can he and his story is always the same they lied and said i was 18. they said they were 18. okay then why aren't you checking why are you talking to fans the power imbalance is so disgusting and it's so gross to me that like you're into the fact that these kids look up to you like you know first of all you know the age group of your fans you can see your analytics and second of all just date a regular person go on grinder do something other than just dming people on instagram hi daddy when they're married straight men like what the fuck i just think that i don't know what the answer is but i know that my mind has changed from last night and i do think that this is shown to be a pattern with james and i don't know what the answers are he needs to be better at vetting people he's talking to. He needs to stop fucking flirting with fans. And he needs to take some fucking accountability because while he says he's not victim blaming this child he sent nudes to, he kind of is. And James Charles has had, honestly, more scandals than most influencers. And he keeps getting by, probably because he's a white man. Um, and I just think that we need to start treating male victims the same as female victims and we need to believe victims and you know i will admit that my first gut reaction was to question this kid's um story but even if this kid even if this kid did lie it's a pattern for james and why the fuck are you messaging fans and why the fuck are you not checking id like the fact that he was like now i guess i'll have to check id and he made it sound like it was ridiculous but like this has happened before six months ago and you didn't learn that then when you were messaging a f you sent nudes to a 14 year old child and you didn't realize then that maybe you should have a better vetting process so who gets to see your bare ass like i'm just floored but i do know that james needs to realize that he is not the general population and he needs to stop fucking finding kids on social media or at least do a little research ask for some id do something because this is just like it's a pattern and I don't know what the answer is. And like, I'm not here to say cancel James Charles. I'm not here to say whatever. I'm just here to present you guys with the information that I have and ask you guys what you think. Do you think this is a pattern? Do you think I'm crazy? Do you think that this kid is lying? But then it's like, are they all lying? Like, it's just, you know, there are so many YouTubers that don't get into this kind of mess. So the question is why James? And it's because he's reckless, he's careless, he takes calculated risks like Smokey Glow said, and this is behavior that is unacceptable. And if he doesn't want to lose his career, he needs to get his fucking shit together. Cause it's gross. And stop, stop flirting with your fans. Stop trying to fuck your fans. And also stop trying to fly them out to see you. Like it's weird. Is that weird to me? It's like very like sugar daddy behavior. Also stop being rude and text messages and being such a fuck boy. <sighs> okay, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for watching. Sorry we're gonna have some heavy topics this week but I think they need to be discussed. And I know a lot of drama channels won't discuss them because of how heavy of a topic they are. But I think that, you know, there's minors involved and this isn't the first time or the second time. This is the second time this year so we need to discuss it and have it known. Thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.